and our co-hosts, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. He is a two-star. Good morning, Billy. Good morning, Rob. With this heat, I feel like I'm dragging along like a turtle. I was just going to say. <laughs> in the dark? In the dark. In the in dark. The dark. <laughs> also, well, you're, you're adding the dark part. I was not going to add the dark No, the governor, the governor added, added the, the dark I know, but I was talking about yeah. in, in my, uh, my sense, feeling like I'm dragging along like a turtle. Also co-hosting today, all-star, Maria Lawrence. Good morning to you, Maria. Good morning. Good to be here. It's hot out there. Do you have any turtle analogies you'd like to I have to no us? turtle analogies. I just know when I took my morning class a little after 5 a.m. this morning, it was already really hot. Yeah, well, it's supposed to break a little bit uh, for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, I hope we get that rain. I guess some places did get rain last night. Yeah, I, um, did, I didn't I, see any rain. Hedgesville, Jarrettstown, nothing in town. Sure. I have a turtle analogy. <laughs> We're coming back. Hold on a second. Yeah. We're coming back. <laughs> well, don't, just, just real don't quick. Don't mute me. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah, I need uh, a couple of subs and a pizza if you could get them here. Yeah, take your time. It, yeah, I got time. Yeah, thanks. All right, go ahead, Bill. You're yeah. about to tell a story. My, my turtle. We, uh, we have a box turtle, uh, three or four of them. I even have them named. Uh, they've been laying eggs every year. They never hatched. Another one laid this year, and I have a box around it to keep the birds out of it, to keep the raccoons. I'm watching it every day. I'm hoping I'll see some young box turtles hatch, but so far, no luck. Well, there's always tomorrow. Always tomorrow. Indeed. Open. Our guest in this segment, who is not expecting a box turtle segment, is <laughs> Melissa Power. She is the new vice president of the Berkeley County Board of Education, teaming up with uh, Jackie Long, who is the new president. So it's woman power now in charge of the BOE. Good morning to you, Melissa. Good morning to you, Rob. Thank you for having me. I don't have any box turtles. I don't want any box turtles. Do not ask my daughter if she wants a turtle, even though she's been clamoring for one. Do not, Mr. Stubblefield, <laughs> reach you know, out to my daughter. Point your finger at her. Just <laughs> make sure point one of those. You know, this is against state law to pick on one out of the wild and to try to raise it as a pet. And there's a... Uh, you, you don't do that. And good. Jump all but yours yourself. are in the wild. Mine's in the wild. Okay, mine yours will, are in the wild. Okay, mine will stay good. in the wild. Good. Yeah. It can stay there. Yeah. <laughs> the wild, so long as you consider the acreage around Mr. Stubblefield's compound as being the wild, it That's is a heavily wild. patrolled and uh, strongly guarded area. Amen. With a moat with alligators out <laughs> around it. <laughs> See, Maybe I, that's why you don't have any hatched eggs, by the way. I feel like there's multiple mornings, Rob, where you talk about people's property. Yes. Okay. What is your fascination with other people's properties? OPP, other people's property. That's what we're talking about here today. <laughs> is, Remember it that song? Your property, is it because your property isn't that great? So you're saying I have property envy. I, I, I'm wondering. You it is? I'm wondering. Property envy. You talk about everybody else's property. What about yours? So you're saying Bill's property is bigger than mine. Is that what you're implying? I, look, I have no idea about that. <laughs> go, Melissa. Go, go. I'm staying out of this. <laughs> That's a good idea. I think I'm going to go back to my sideline. <laughs> yeah. You talk, you're talking about woman power. While, uh, talking about woman power. While Remember, though. Melissa, I'm a professional. Yeah. Don't try this at home. Oh. Have we ever not had woman power? Oh, it's it's currently they had a coup. They overthrew the men, yeah, and the I, women are now in charge of the BOE. Oh, but, but I think underlined the whole time it's been woman power at the but, BOE. Yeah, at everywhere. I'm everywhere talking specifically look, yeah. about the BOE. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, good old Pat was in, was the the president, but I bet and look the, what they did to him, Bill. Yeah, the power <laughs> wrong chromosome were. out. Jackie and I did not do that, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, you have to have people that nominate you, second it, and then vote for you. So You should have thought of that before you went down that whole property issue that I you had I should have me. said no to that in my head, but it sounded so good at the time. Well, <laughs> I will know better for next time. <laughs> we do have serious issues to discuss, and I promise we will get to those. <laughs> However, first and foremost... We can stick with box turtles if yeah, you want. If you're going to name a turtle... Uh, what are you going to name a turtle? We're not getting a turtle. Because there's, there's an obvious name for any turtle. No, I'm not getting a turtle. For your daughter. When you no, get her a turtle, not, what are you going to name her? We're not getting a turtle. You just said earlier on the show you're getting her a turtle. No, she wants a turtle. I told her no to a turtle. And then turtle. Bill pointed out it's illegal to right. capture box turtles. And that's a good thing because I don't want a turtle. To bring into your home. Right. That's a good thing. The answer is Myrtle, by the way. Myrtle. Yeah, the answer is Myrtle. Nice. Let's let's talk about being... Mr. Stubblefield. I don't know. I'm enjoying this, Maria. Let them go. I'm, hey. I'm okay. You just go. You and I can I'm talk on the side. I'm curious what the comments are right at the moment on Facebook. Not nice. Not nice. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Not nice. 
<laughs> uh, congratulations in all Thank seriousness you. of being uh, the vice president. Thank this you. Is, this is a fairly quick ascension uh, up the, the ladder here as a BOE member. I, you know, it's not something that I, you know, thought of or I guess maybe even considered. So, I mean, it's it, it, it was a shock. Who nominated so. you? Uh, uh, Pat you Murphy. No, <laughs> Pat Murphy did. Oh, I thought you did. No, the, Pat the, Murphy nominated. The, the rumor, and then the rumor Damon, is you nominated yourself. Oh, heavens to Betsy. I'm not. You know what? <laughs> I was defending you. What's wrong with your property? (laughs) What's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. Oh my goodness! This is a rare morning for you guys. Maybe I should have come in yesterday. You had your chance. I did. You did have your chance. I gave you an option of days. Yeah, and I left it up to you. And oops. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Now, Pat Murphy nominated. Uh, myself and then um, Damon seconded and we voted and there you go. That's cool. So. That's a good sign of respect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I respect them and I, I feel that they've respected me and um, throughout the last two years and, and our work continuing to do so it not, there's nothing that's really quote unquote changing other than Jackie's the one who's going to be running the meetings, mm-hmm. um, you know, and it, when in her absence, whether she recuses herself or she's not able to make a meeting, I would step up to that. But otherwise it's five people people on a board and each of us have an equal say um to different topics and you know ability to ask questions and well, you do have a new superintendent to work with now and he's in place we do and it's 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 been a nice uh couple of weeks well week i should say just over mm-hmm. a week it's yeah. been nice tell me about your interactions and from a personal yeah. basis with dr Sam. Uh, yeah so uh, he's uh, personal i mean we've only gone down a, a rabbit hole of how are you doing how is your family and um that sort of thing um we've we've been sticking more close to to the um, professional topics just because there's a lot to do mm-hmm. um he is um he's already i mean if you if anybody saw the last board meeting he is there there is a difference um in his uh, addressing the board and hi- the way that he interacts with us, there's there is a clear difference, and it's it's What's very refreshing. Uh, so I'm going to go back to a comment that someone a uh, question that someone asked me. Um, your super well, maybe maybe uh, I will take that question and make it a comment. I'll say the question was, um, does your superintendent have a healthy respect and fear of the board? because that's your supervisor, They're, the Board of Education is your supervisor. Um, and the statement I would say is, I believe based on the interactions I've had with Dr. Sachs, he has a healthy fear and respect for the board. Are you implying that the previous superintendent did not? You can take that any way you want. I'm just saying that it has been nice 10 days I'm gonna take and there's that. a healthy respect and uh, yes, no, <laughs> fear take of that the as board. A- <laughs> That's an answer, Bill. Yeah, you don't have to dig very deeply in that answer. Yeah, that's <laughs> correct. Um, what's Ron doing now? Is he still in the school system? He's been he, named a uh, principal, principal at Hedgesville, I believe. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, so um, by code, because we elected to not renew his contract, we had to find a position for him. It just so happens that uh, a position has opened up. Uh, for him to uh, take over the Hedgesville High School. Okay. I asked this question to Jackie and uh, the other day. Mm-hmm. Uh, the schools have had a lot of problems or a yeah. lot of visibility in several fronts over the last couple of so years. One is the, uh, uh, the school safety, SROs, yes. and hardening the schools. Another yes. one is discipline problems. S- certainly another one is the uh, the teacher's uh, salary. And then more recently, the academics. Uh you, you're not. You cannot solve all of these at one time. Uh, there's been some Correct. progress on every one of them. From your perspective, mm-hmm. which is the one these areas should get the most attention that requires the most attention at this point in time? Hmm. There are. Both are important. All of them. Uh, yeah. All, all, all yeah. of them are important. Two are particularly important, which is the increasing the academics, but also the behavior. Um, I would dare say you can't teach when there are students in the classroom that are not behaving within the parameters that they should be expected to behave. And we need to have a consistent um, disciplinary uh, policy 
that is followed not just by one school but every school and that does not exist now technically it does however there's been i think the guidance that um i've heard they um the the administrators the the principals and vice principals from the schools what i've heard from them is the guidance that they've received from the central office employees um has been those are suggestions and they really shouldn't be suggestions there it's we, we should be it should be consistent across the board if you have one student that goes to um and i'm just pulling school names they are not by any stretch of the imagination anything that is that is real life that has been spoken to me but if you have a student that goes to let's say tomahawk intermediate and they follow the the policy well for for discipline but then they go to let's say hedgesville middle and there's some not as close to and i'm using feeder schools so just for clarity one there's no instance of this happening and two um um this is this is just for the sake of example um if you then go to hedgesville middle school and you've got you've you've got another student in hedgesville middle and it, there's no consistency that now what i mean you, that creates some chaos in the feeder school system of you know one school going into the next so it's it can be a little crazy i'd like to follow up later but let me go to maria well so. i was just going to say then so people being people mm -hmm. um consistency is one thing but yes um you know administrators principals supervisors everybody has their own you know sort of way yep. of managing and and leading mm -hmm. um how do you promote this particular kind of consistency um, is it more um, strict training? Um, is it you have to do things, stay in this lane? Um, how does that work? So my, my, in my history of being in the public school system, it, I, can, I can definitely say that there has been um, instances where we've blurred lines. Uh, we've, we've blurred our boundary lines. And that is, we've gotta be careful that we stay in our in the lane that we've been we've been given so i would dare say that if you're wanting consistency it's it starts yes with the training but it also starts at the top what is the top look look like so one of the things that that i can appreciate about dr Sachs is that he has in in the history of him being a superintendent he has been consistent in how he is implementing things and so when you have that consistency at the top it then does trickle down into the schools but at the same time you also have to have the central office employees going into schools visiting for more than five ten minutes or or a little bit longer i know that there there have been so many different reports reported to me that some central office employees that are tasked to go into schools are not there for very long um, I've said that in open board meetings. Um, I'd like to see that change because you can't get the feel of what's going on in a school for five or 10 minutes. You need to stay there for an extended period of time, you know, several hours throughout the day, several times throughout the school year, throughout even a month, um, just to get an idea of what's going on in the schools. And that consistency, that reinforcement, and the ability to say, we support you. If you've got a student in your school system or in your school that is not behaving well, yeah, we're gonna have to address this because it's not just it, it's it's not just that student that's misbehaving, but it's everybody else that's watching that behavior and potentially could escalate their own. But at the same time, nobody's learning. What's going on in that student's life? Address that student, help that student, but then help the other students because it, it's a, it's an issue. and and it's got to start somewhere. You made reference to the central office. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's a sure. conversation that's been out there. Yeah. Um, are, is, are there too many staff in the central office? Um, and how do we, um, how do we make that right? If, if you believe that that's the case. So it's really difficult because we're one of the largest counties in the state of West Virginia. And when you look at a lot of what we have to do because we are the largest it it's difficult to say that there needs to be um, a reduction of any kind what i will say is this um i would like to see consistency from from everyone there are many people at our board office that do very do things very very well and i i, I do acknowledge that um 
uh, one of the individuals that I think, um, even though I, I did, you know, go at questions pretty, pretty hard, I love Elise Gregory. She's doing everything that I think is she can do in her position. What does she do? Melissa? Um, she actually works with her title nine. Okay. Um, um, and, and really hones in on that in on that area in our school system she does is she does the best that she can do and and i i commend her for it um you know and and there are many others in the board office uh that do their job well um jessica manuel is is another one she's she is um the administrative assistant for for the board so i mean it it for the the board of education members and the superintendent and she's i mean Anything we ask, you know, she helps us navigate where to go and how to get the information and she facilitates getting it. So um, she's she's really good. So, I mean, again, you know, and I've said Dr. Schooley was great with helping us get the superintendent. So there's many people that are there that are good, but there are some that I think I'm hoping that maybe with this change, there's there's some changes across the board. So. Looking at the board. Uh, from a simplistic standpoint, I say the school board has two major functions, one to set policy mm -hmm. and one to provide oversight. Right. What's the argument against you? And to hire a superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that, that's, yeah. Okay. What's the argument, though, that you're, you're just a paper tiger? Uh, oh. You roar, but you have no teeth. You know, I see that point. I don't think before I joined the Board of Education, I don't know that I would have had that same understanding, uh, to be honest and, and transparent on that. Um, what I think is, is interesting is we do, we do manage, or not manage, we do oversee the superintendent. Um, and if they're is not the ability to work with that superintendent uh, for whatever reason, or they feel that they're not able to work with the board. I mean, you know, the current contract allows, you know, our, our current superintendent to, to, to leave or to uh, not have his contract renewed or, or whatever that, that may be. So, But let me interrupt you a second. Yeah. Up to the absence of replacing and not renewing a contract for mm -hmm. a superintendent, mm -hmm. as we had recently, uh, how involved as an oversight do you get, in, do you mm -hmm. get as a board? Case in point, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, discipline problem we have in North Middle School. Sure. That, that surfaced uh, through the state board. It yes. did not surface with a local board. No, it did not. And but yet, in my view, that's where it should have surfaced. It should have, and if we had known what was going on, that, it would have. That comes. And back, the reason that why comes I, back to my question about oversight. Okay. How and, deep do you go with oversight? Well, okay, so we are not in the day-to-day -day operations of the school system. In in that is the that is the task of the superintendent. Uh, we are not to go into a school. We can go into a school and visit uh, and observe, but we are not to go into a school and command. This is what we're supposed to do, and this is how we should do it. Um, that's not my. That's not my role. That's not my job. I've gone in towards schools, and uh, I, I'm typically guided around because at this point I'm still relatively new within the, the county. Um, so I'm shown around the school. Uh, I visit a couple of classrooms, you know, and I sit in on, a, you know, maybe a lesson here or a lesson there and, and I will visit. What I can tell you is this, on one of my visits in one of our schools, I noticed behaviors that were that were bad. It was it was not good, it was not healthy for the students and it was not healthy for the staff. And I immediately alerted the, you know, the superintendent and I immediately alerted several of our other board members. And that school is 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 turning around and is not North Middle. I you there are there are so many different schools. North Middle just hadn't hit my list at that particular moment. Yeah, I was not so trying I to make I was not trying to make this about you. No, 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 yeah, no. But I, I'm I'm defending the board the yeah, the board members but, because we also n there there was a board member that went in earlier in the year did not see what was seen by the state. So if we don't see it and we don't know about it, how do we know, you know, that we need to have a conversation with the superintendent and say, hey, did you know this? Because this is an issue. Okay, but you see something. You walk in. Mm -hmm. What are the, how much authority do you have as a board to go in and insist upon corrective action? How much authority do you have? Little to none. We can, we can suggest 
because you're you're getting into HR issues. So human resource re, resource issues are starting to come into play. So you've got if you if I say Mr. Stubblefield, you're a principal of a school and I go into your school and there are issues and then I go to Rob and I say, hey, Rob, you're the superintendent of our school system. You need to do something over here with uh, with Mr. Stubblefield's school. Maybe corrective action needs to be done. I'm I'm now telling him what to do with his employee. I don't manage you. I manage him. That's all I do. I can suggest, I can say, hey, mm -hmm. did you know that this was going on at Mr. Stubblefield's school? But you can't say deal I, with it? I can say it needs to be addressed. That's about as much as I can say. This needs to, th this needs to be turned around. That's about as much but as I can do. Now the state board, though, can mm -hmm. go in and say you will do. Is they've, that right? got different, they've got different teeth. But now, why do they have different teeth? Is HR is still you know, it's involved? An, it's, HR, it's an interesting, yeah, yeah it, it's it's definitely interesting, and I'm still navigating some of those those areas. You you bring up a very good point, um, and it's not something that that I haven't yet explored. But they are also you've got to, okay. Take a look at it from this perspective. The state board of education manages the state superintendent. That state superintendent manages the state. At Board of Education, the state, the state's uh, offices. So, if they're being told to come into our schools and take over because of issues, yeah, it does give them more teeth. So, do you see your role, Melissa, and the role of the other board members as going from school to school to school, sitting in on a class, saying, "Mr. Mario, no, I'm wrong, I, I Mr. Like Superintendent." Mm -hmm. um, this is what I observed, and we need no. to do something about this. No. Okay. No, I do not. Okay. No, I do not. But you have gone to several I have, schools. I have gone to several schools. Uh, only one school have I brought back and said, uh-oh, we've got some issues. Um, and it was because behavior, it wasn't just one student's behavior. A any school is going to have a student that could be escalating on any day. When you have multiple students, 